versus Castleford in Scrum Down. Two neighbours in trouble. The First Division may only be big enough for one of them. Today, Featherston and Castleford meet at Post Office Road. It's the shortest away trip of the season for the Castleford supporters, but some of them still go by coach, and they have plenty to talk about on the way because Cass have been ringing the changes. Lee Crooks arrived to boost the front row. Price, £150,000. Graham Stedman from Featherston. A touch of class at standoff, £145,000. Ian Bragger from Keithley via Salford, skill in the centre, £60,000. And £30,000 for the wing speed of York's Singinellis took the total for the four to £385,000. But the Cass fans know that money may not buy success, and a win today is vital. The bottom of the table shows Barrow and Salford apparently doomed, but Featherston and Cass both in serious danger of occupying the third relegation spot. Cass have games in hand, but Featherston are in better form with four successive wins. I think we should win today. I think we should win the rest of the season. I can't see us losing even to Wigan. I think we should beat them as well. Well, we've got, looking on paper, we've got quite an easy running because we've to play our Lee, Salford, Barrow twice. But with it being local derby and that, and they've beat us twice already, so I think they'll be going out today to do it. <laughs> well, it's a four-pointer today, and... We've to win because people are saying we've Salford twice, Barra twice, Lee twice, but they're starting to get results and it's a bit worrying. How much do you think we'll win by today? 25. <laughs> well, arriving after a marathon 10 mile trip, these fans will no doubt get a friendly enough welcome at Post Office Road, but neighbourly love between the two clubs has not been helped by controversy surrounding Graham Stedman, Lee Crooks, and Chris Bibb. When Castleford broke their record fee to buy Stedman from Featherston last summer, they were accused of poaching. Then Lee Crooks preferred to join Cass, even though Featherston had apparently offered £20,000 more. And there have been persistent rumours that Cass have approached Rovers' Chris Bibb, rumours denied by both clubs. Uh, we're hoping he's going to stop. We want him to stop. And I hope he's going to stop and show a bit of loyalty to the supporters that have supported him all season. Well, what was it somebody said about getting Chris, babe? That's right. And keep your hands off him. We'll be struggling without Chris. I'm, he's, a, he's a really class player and uh, he's worth a test place for me every time. Patterson wanted Lee Crooks and that didn't happen. No, I'm glad we didn't get him anyway. Eight matches banned, a lot of rubbish. You think Lee Crooks went to the wrong club? Definitely. What about Def Chris Bibb? He's stopping here, Paul. He definitely stopping here. Featherston keep the team, which beat Warrington here 2013 a week ago, with two tries from Ivor Rapati, taking his season's total to 14. And the first outing, a substitute for Aaron Palilai, who's moved from Nottingham City. Castleford welcome back Sinjin Ellis on the right wing after suspension and in the second row Neil Batty who's retired once defies doctor's orders to replace the suspended Lee Crooks. And there's Graham Stedman back on his old ground for only his second comeback game in the first team after his cheek was broken in the autumn. Lee Crooks of course can only watch today, he's been suspended for eight matches after being sent off a week ago but Chris Bibb is playing, his contract at Post Office Road lasts till the end of the season. Featherston very much hope he'll sign a new one too. Well, coming later, we feature David Young and see his Leeds debut against Barrow, plus today's only all First Division Cup tie between Wakefield and Sheffield. But now let's join our match commentators here at Post Office Road, David Watkins and John Hell. The rivalry as intense as ever between Castleford and Featherston, and when the Castleford names were read out, Graham Stedmans was roundly booed. Uh, you probably expect that, playing against his former side. And Featherston straight away looked to get a try in the corner with Eva Rapati. Well, what a start that would have been. Uh, and they're still going, and the ball is down, and it's over, and it's a tr it can't be a try, surely. I thought the referee was saying no immediately. And it was Gary Rose. What a sensational first derby match that would have been for him. But I saw Robin Whitfield signal no try immediately. So despite Rose's leap, it wasn't to be. And 
now Castle could need the ball and they've got it. Uh, Gary French. Well, what a start, David. Well, that was sensational to say the least. Uh, it's always been daunting to come to Featherstone. It's always difficult to play here. So parochial the crowd and biased. And cast know that there's more than reputations at stake this afternoon. And I was saying about Graham Steadman, and obviously he really want to do well against the club that sold him to Castleford. Well, I would imagine it would be difficult. I've never been in that position myself, but it is difficult. You're coming back and playing against teammates you actually played with. They know a little bit about you, and I've no doubts at all the crowd will give him a lot of stick. Incredible start to this game here. I mean, uh, I can't see what was wrong with that there, because, but uh, the touch judge obviously said it was in touch, and he was at that side of the player. But what a start. Stedman, this time he lacks the kick, and that's a super spinning kick. Oh, that is the most perfect kick he could possibly have negotiated. Well, what better could you ask for to start the game than that? A lovely jinking run and a superb kick right across the floor. Gained something like 40 yards. Must have done his confidence good. Absolutely. Record signing. Showing that there is some money in the game. When you think that uh, Featherston bid £170,000 for Lee Crooks. Staggered a lot of people. Here's Castleford with a real chance. French five yards out. Getting that ball from the scrum was crucial. And, uh, well, they're still here because the ball was knocked back. Oh, no, it went into New Love's hands. A little steadiness there, and the first points had to be on the board. Well, you can put that down to nerves, really, in a local derby situation, but there was no excuse for passing the ball to the man on the opposite side. Burton once more, smack it to Kevin Ward, aided and abetted there by Neil Batty. Gration, Fox, shorter ball to Bibb. And on the last tackle, it'll be Fox to kick, but there's an offside anyway. And such is the attraction of this match that fans are still outside the ground, determined to get in, willing to pay their money. There's no doubt, whatever else happens in the season, this is regarded as the match of the season at Post Office Road. Oh, that was delightful, and Fox has made the break, and he's got support on either side. He turns it to the left. And, uh, oh, once again, the ball is spilled. It was all just a little bit too hurried in the end. Derek Fox had almost too many options, perhaps. He still found his man coming into court on them, taking, and eventually the ball spun for Castleford into their hands. Relief at both ends. They really depend on him a lot. Uh, he does make some superb runs. By taking that ball flat, the defence really couldn't get a grip with him. And uh, he just saw the gap and went straight through it. Uh, everyone has given chase, but he takes the right option. He had to give it out. The pass got in that time, but of course the forward with him couldn't really get it away properly. And join Joiner going away, and uh, just didn't happen. And that's a great ball back inside for Hardy, and that was good teamwork between Ellis, Larder, and Hardy. They all knew where one another, where they all were. French, Joiner. Ward. Well, some lively stuff from Castleford in these opening moments. It's not easy to hold on to the ball today. Stedman can't keep his feet either for the moment. There have been a lot of promising raids, if no tries as yet. Joyner is going to go into Featherston hands again. Well, both sides have had their chances. They have a few bad passes, spoiled it really, but it is back to the classic cast we all knew some time ago when we saw the ball. Well, what a time for Burton to drop the ball, and St. John Ellis, 15 yards out, was only too thankful to pick it up. Dean Sampson, son of the former Castleford coach, Dave Sampson.
Joyner, the short ball for Ward, and Ward looks for the supporting Stegman, and he's held up by very good tackling, seven yards out. Well, Castleford have got tremendous options here, and Patty, they thought there was an obstruction, but he's hauled down again just before the last tackle. They'll have to be quick if they're going to get a try. And they're still amassing the ranks, but he's buried his way over, I think. Looks to have uh, tunnelled his way. But Robin Whitfield again says no try, and he was right on the line. So Steve Larder this time is denied. Well, that happened at both ends. Well, Castle determined to play good football, and they are, because the ball is being passed in very difficult conditions. They're moving about. The final pass has let them down time and time again. But Whitfield was there at that time. And it was quite obvious that it wasn't a try because nobody really argued about it. Quick play the ball here and dives forward for the line. But there's no doubts at all about it. He was there as well, and that ball certainly wasn't across the line. Well, that's lost, and it's gone straight into Anderson's hands. He was in the right place at the right time. England, well... Uh, carry the move on coming towards the Philiston 25 and this time it's a penalty for Castleford offside against Chris Burton just so Graham Stedman elects to kick a goal I just noticed in the game actually be, uh, the passes are being dropped more often than not because players aren't running from depth they are standing flat and still and as a result they're in a position where the man going forward gets the ball out and because he's not on the move at all uh, they're just dropping the ball And he's a two-point scorer. The ball is out of the ground, but the flags are up and two points for Stedman, two points for Castleford. Nick, down on the touchline. John, just an indication of the conditions. Alan Banks out here on the Featherston right wing, quite near the touchline here, has been desperately trying to keep warm. He's not doing it now, but he's been shaking his hands about in a desperate attempt to keep warm. And that's a very difficult job for wingers who aren't getting much service on a day like this. The rain is blowing horizontally into their faces. <laughs> I know the feeling. Fox reverses the ball to Dakin. And, uh, Jeff Grayson has stayed down with an injury. So he looks in some discomfort. The kick through is a good one, and Clark following through just couldn't get there. Well fallen on by Keith England. So Featherston for the moment. And the player out, but it doesn't matter. Castle would have knocked off. And now John Joyner says, please, can I go, sir? The answer is yes. Neil Roebuck, former Bradford Northern player who's joined his hometown club. Still no try scored in this match. It's Hardy for Castleford, looks for a gap and gets it away. And that's a lovely ball reversed inside for Larder. Fine tackle on him by Bibb, who'd come up from the full-back position, saw what was on. A looped ball for French that time. Well, that'll be a knock on and picked up by Fox, who's got a bit of time to think about things this time. New Lovett tries to hold off Hardy. Roy, but Roebuck helps him out. knock on Eva Reparti has the ball in his hands and that's I think the first time since the first minute of the match the New Zealander here who is one more match to play that's all so John Joyner is just seeking advice I think on that shoulder and, uh, what a nice moment I'm sure for Over, so Castleford are here 30 yards out. And a spirited plunge forward. That was Kevin Beardmore. This is Neil Roebuck. Hardy, he's a strong fellow, he's Hardy, and he's got the ball away this time for Anderson, who's surely going short the first time, and then the ball was scored in any case. Well, they can't get any closer without scoring. 
nice piece of interchange passing then, and uh, they've done this quite well at times, and Hardy does create space out of nothing. But of course the referee had spotted the forward pass, and everybody's now getting terribly excited about it. It would have been a double movement as well, I do have felt. Yes, despite the conditions, they are still trying to throw that ball around, and the handling really hasn't been at all bad, because it, I do assure you, is bitterly cold, and now it's a penalty against Castleford. errors in all, Castle would have made two more, but I don't think that's a really bad count on a day like this. Well, it's, a, it's as bad a condition as you could possibly have for the handling game, uh, it, it's slippery underfoot, it's uh, raining and uh, it, it, there's a strong wind blowing down the field, which makes it nearly impossible to run against it. And here comes the human hurricane, Chris Burton. And it would lift the pedestal morale, no end if they could get a try. Gary Rose is the next man up, former key figure, the hot carrier. He's enjoying this more than he is carrying his bricks. Duration. Again, Dakin brings it out, but they'll be able to keep the move going. And they do do. Oh, great running down there. That's marvellous stuff. Smiles involved in Rapati and so was Terry Manning, they were all in there then. And they're being roared on by the crowd at the back of those sticks. Now then can Fox weave his magic. Well, that's a penalty for a high tackle. What's going to happen? Referee Whitfield has already awarded the penalty and he is flat. They've stepped up their game here. Yeah. Smale's doing the run around with uh, Derek Fox, but look at that, straight over the top of him. But Robin Whitfield was there as well, and I think that he thought it wasn't an intentional. I know it's hurt the player, because he's still on the floor, but uh, the referee was there, and uh, whilst he has awarded the penalty, and he is talking to the players, uh, he hasn't made any sort of move to send anyone from the field to play. No, he's just had a word with Dean Sampson. Sampson is staying on the field. But Felliston do have a penalty. Oh, he's having another word with Dean Sampson now. sufficient and, uh, Derek Fox will try to pop over his 51st goal of the season well on any normal day this would be a simple kick today I'm not so sure but Fox is sure enough the ball is safely between the posts Palace than a level Frankly, runner. I say still, he's been around the rugby league scene for a few years now. He won't mind me saying that. Oh, that's a lovely ball. And they've kept it going, and here is Fox again sprinting down this hill as he's done countless times. Trevor Clark takes it on. It's on the last tackle, though. Could be a drop goal, maybe. No, Fox will just chip it through. It wasn't an easy one to take, but Lada was equal to it. The important thing to look for in this is when the scum half delivers the pass and the ball goes along the Smales loose forward, they've stood him out wide for a purpose. He's held up, but look, Derek Fox again on his shoulder, draws the defence, holds the ball to the last minute and puts a pass to a man coming on the first. Good play. Well, it'll be a rarity indeed if Castleford don't get a try today. A marvellous record over the last two and a half seasons. And they're trying to put that right now. Grant Anderson. Sorry, sight, but uh, there is the hooter. 
David, it's not been a bad half, despite the fact we haven't got a try. Well, I think Featherstone will be well pleased with themselves. Their game plan has been evident this afternoon. They've kept it tight, they've moved it out wide. And, of course, uh, Cass must uh, wonder what's going to hit them this second half, because I'm sure they'll be have the wind played against them better than they've played it themselves. Yes, I can tell you one thing is going to hit them, the wind and the rain, but there we are, two points each, a goal for Derek Fox, a goal for Graham Stedman. We'll be right back with the second half after the break. Marciano stepped into the ring to become the heavyweight champion of the world. Marciano! It was a title he would never lose. For what Rocky lacked in bulk, he more than made up for in power. Welcome back to Post Office Road. A half-time score here was Featherstone Rovers 2, Castleford 2. We've plenty to talk about, and Peter Fox always has something worth listening to. He's down there with Nick. Peter, are you happy with the situation as it stands? Yes, we've done well this first half. Went against a very strong wind, holding them to 2-2, two -two, stopping them scoring tries. That's all we could have hoped for, to be... Uh, level we didn't expect ever to be in front in this first half kicking game in the second half well we shall use the ball up the field and keep them pen up here if we can the tackling still got to be as strong and stop them breaking away and uh, we might have the opportunity of winning the game Pete, thanks very much indeed the news from the Castleford dressing room by the way they're very doubtful whether John Joyner will take any further part in the match and just to learn about Robin Redfield's about to start the game he came out of his dressing room without his whistle went back for it he's ready now so are we here's John well, the only thing, it's not the only thing that has been blown away this afternoon. Uh, it's very much a forwards game, uh, David, is this one? It is, uh, but he, he is right, Peter Fox. He's got to say exactly how the game goes. It'll be stupid for them to hold the ball in their own 25, and I'm sure Derek Fox is alert enough to know that he's got to get his side down into the Castleford Hall. And a personal thank you to all the Featherstone players for changing their strips for the second half. We can see the numbers again. by Larda, runs straight into Smales and Rose, the scrums in the first half are real slaughtering there, 7-1 to Cass and they also took two against the head, one of them very close to the Featherston line, the penalties conceded, Cass 6, Featherston 3 and the error is equal. Verdict. Let's have a Castleford one now from the recent signing, Lee Crooks. Lee, what were your thoughts watching the first half? Yeah. Um, well, obviously, it would have been a very close game. I think the conditions of having a big bearing on the, on the, on the game. It's a local derby, so I think it's going to be tight. But, um, I think that, obviously, we need to probably push the ball a little bit wider and attack them more on the fringes. A little bit concerned that you weren't ahead when you had the wind in the first half? Yeah, I think that, you know, we, we probably should have used the wind a little bit more, but, uh, you know, I think it'll help us in our attack because the, the ball will tend to get blown backwards more, you know, than forwards. So, we say, we're going to keep pushing it wide and try and attack them wider out. To be honest, it's a sort of day, it's not a bad day to be in the dugout, isn't it? Um, I, I suppose you could say that, but uh, I'd rather be out there than here, I think. Thanks very much, Lee. I was just thinking he looked yeah. a little bit warmer. Gratian, Fox. sets off down the right touch line and he really does take some stopping he's got to make sure he stays in play though he's out now Paul Newell of 16 tries so far this season including a hat-trick here against Lee but no one has yet got over the line legally today a couple have been over the line and they've not counted Again, Castleford doing really well in the scrums, and again, Stedman here. All but the ball lost in the tackle, just as he went down, slithered away from his hands. That was an important tackle then by Ian Smales, because he not only did he stop him going forward then, Graham Stedman, but he also made him drop the ball and give them possession back. What a pass that was from Fox on his knees. Still aware enough to get the ball out. That really was cute. Clark, Gratian, and Sharp at the shoulder. 
Strong stuff from Featherston now, and the fans behind the post cheering in anticipation. Are oh, we going to get a try at last? Oh, it's gone to ground, but it's fallen on, and six more tackles have touched the Catholic foot. It's a great chance for Featherston, is this, as Alan Dakin goes to within 15 yards, and a penalty is awarded for the tackle by Samson. And Samson himself got injured in the knock. Well, Samson's going to have to be careful, he's been spoken to already. Yeah, but if you watch this in the tackle here, he does bring his elbow up here. Look at that, he caught him right under, and obviously he wanted to get him back, and he took a swing at him, there's no doubt at all about it. But the referee was there, and retaliation means a penalty. Derek Fox, 4-2. Oh, dearie me. Well, it's fair enough with something like that today because you wouldn't have a clue which side anybody was on at times. The shirts are so muddy, that's just one of the problems. There's a bit of rain on some of our camera lenses and the trainers have also been on to wipe them out of a number of players eyes so problems all around but we love our Sunday afternoon rugby league and nothing's going to stop us not then that's not an easy one to take on it's well fielded now they have to move the ball out and it's exactly what they did for his first class passing right along the line here and St. John Ellis now really knows he's got an opportunity he shrugs off a would-be tackler and it's only a de brave defence by Chris Bird that pushes him out well, we've had an hour at post office road without a try I can't ever recall that before but there you go conditions not really aiding faster than running rugby as you can see Beardmore still Beardmore terrific running from the Great Britain hooker that was the best of Kevin Beardmore and, uh, very good attacking work from Castleford as England took it on there are chances this time strong plunge for the line might just do there twice, now French, French's kick, could be dangerous, one Rapati fumbles, the ball is kicked on, and is that a try for Steve Larder? Steve Larder's done it! It's taken an hour in coming, but Larder's tenacity paid off when Rapati fumbled the ball, 20 tries for him this season, and I wonder if there's going to be a more important one. Featherstone have lived dangerously. They should have got the ball out of the out of their 25 when they should have. They allowed the kick to go forward. What a blunder by the wing. Larder persistently scrambles his way across. If at first you don't succeed, I'll get there in the end. Try was worth four points. And that kick just fails to produce another two not an easy day for kickers six points to four and Cass regain the lead well it, uh, it's a superb kick by Gary French right across the face I mean why he didn't drop one in the first place I've no idea he allowed it to go behind his back the centre did but Phil Larder was knowing that there was an opportunity for him and he took it Cr 
Federation and Fox. Trying to dart into that gap. Again, it's Gratian, and there's a gap here. And he's five yards out, and he's on the fifth tackle as well. So once more, they'll have to be quick, they'll have to be slick. Fox is slick enough. Norris going to be tackled back behind his own line, so it'll be a drop out between the posts. Never stops thinking, does Derek Fox. Uh, took the play with him to the right, got the players going with him, and crossed the kick back inside then. The player took the ball in his own defensive uh, goal area and was tackled instantly, giving him the ball back yet again to try for even more pressure. This is an important kick. Gives as much distance as possible. To the wind, that's not easy. Chris Bibb takes it on the burst, and Bibb goes for the line, and now the pass is out to Smales, who gets it back for Bibb. Again, they're only six or seven yards out. Smales and Bibb at the heart of things once more. Heaven knows, Featherston is trying hard enough. Roared on by their fans behind those posts. Across the line. Now it's Castlever's turn to tackle everything in sight. Here comes Pelele. Quarter of an hour to go, and whatever quarter of an hour it promises to be. The score only 6 4. Desperate defensive work. Last tackle once more. Smales is calling for it over on this side of the field. He really does fancy his chances today. They're trying to get Gratian over, are they? No, it's Castlefield's ball again. That was Neil Batty. England, good ball inside. Samson and another ball inside. And this is uh, effective work from Castleford. Beardmore just about able to pick himself up. And again a good call. This time it's New Love. Now there's a great chance over there, but uh, once more. Tackle was good. Now Kevin Ward. New Love. They've simply got to use up the tackles. Here's a chance now. And Rapati can make up for his mistake. Rapati heads for the corner. Well, he's there. Rapati's in at the corner. He's made up for his mistake. Eva party goes home to New Zealand next week to start a university course and he, more than anybody on this field, wanted a try. Well, we've said about the conditions for most of this game, saying how difficult it is, but the passing year is textbook style. Every pass was made to count. Rapati, who made that fatal mistake at the bottom end, has his opportunity and doesn't he take it well? You might call that a bit of a scramble. He won't care. 15 tries. And he's only got one more game to play for the club, but he's been a very popular player at Post Office Road. Well, the crowd were roaring the try. Are they going to roar the goal? No. A word of instruction has just gone out to Derek Fox from the bench. His side are ahead again at 8-6. 
look, look at the passing movement. We've talked about it, haven't we? But, I mean, it really is timing of the pass perfectly. Even spells that out. A party, when he gets this pass, he's only one thing on his mind here now, to make up for that blunder that he made a few minutes ago. And he really does. He shimmers, stretches for the corner. Down it goes. Five minutes to go here. This is there going to be a sting in the tail one way or the other? Lada takes the pass, comes down the touchline. Great work from Steve Lada. The long pass in two for Ellis. Then the French fumbles it. Bellister can pick it up. <laughs> well, that was Terry Manning who picked it up and everything happened in that. The ball being switched over to that right touchline now. They're coming back in field. Featherston much clearer. Fox can't take them uh, clearer still. Nonetheless, it's looking good now at 12 points to six. Let's go down to Nick. Peter Smith, you must be living every moment of this, aren't you? Well, it's also nice to beat Castle, but I think they've got it in bag now with three minutes to go. But that makes it three wins and a draw for us over Castle, which is great this season. Just tell us how the Reds will try and play this last three minutes now. Well, they've got to play it tight now, keep hold of the ball and then kick it downfield as far as possible, play it in Castleford's 25. Are you going to enjoy watching it or not? Certainly am, I'm going to enjoy it in three minutes' time. Peter, thanks very much. John? Well, he, I hope he's not too premature from his point of view because uh, the ball went straight back into Castleford's hands and a try and a goal would, of course, bring the scores level. It's definitely not all over yet. Only two minutes to go. So the countdown is this. Scrum down and countdown together. Well picked up. Superbly picked up by Anderson. Well, it was Tim Sharp who made that terrific break for Featherston to set up for Laley's try. French with the up and under. Who fancy taking this one? Comes back on the Castleford side. But, uh, awarded to Cass they've got to run it they do run it Southernwood and then Hardy there's a player flat out but to hardly anybody's noticing him unfortunately at the moment because everything is on the game oh and here's a chance under the post is it going to be a try for Castleford right at the end the referee looks and can't give it because he's not quite made it what a melee what a muddle he did well to spot Philele going over. What's going to happen here? Can Castleford snatch at least a draw? It's not a victory. A minute to go. Castleford fans desperately hoping for a score. Oh, the ball is lost. And that could be the last chances for Castleford as well. This is, this is this is really fine stuff, and they've interpassed quite well at times. One can't understand why they haven't continued to do it. But he goes for the line here, and he's held now by two, three tacklers. He's swivelling all the time. He goes there, 
but the referee's there and he certainly wasn't over. Referee Whitfield has missed nothing. Well, we're into injury time here and Castleford have lost six in a row and it could be seven in a row. As Fox puts out the pass, Castleford pick it up. Featherston could be five wins for them on the trot. And against Castleford as well, it means so much more to them. Oh, the ball is picked up for Featherston by Manning. Well, another one where Ellie would obviously seal it. It's 12 points to six. We're in injury time, and it's looking like two points for Featherston in their bid to stay in Division One. And a victory would increase Castleford's worries. Miles has had a marvellous match at loose forward and there he was again in the thick of things. And there could yet be another score. No, the world, it's all over. And it's Featherston's day. Featherston's points. Peter Fox walks back to his dressing room as calm as you like. Not many people here are calm. Castleford go down by six points to twelve. Featherston have had to work every second of the 80 minutes for all this success. Muddy marbles, they'll say. And there are the details of this victory. Tries then for Rapati, one of his last appearances, and for the substitute for Laley to go with those two Fox goals. Just one Steve Larder effort for Castleford and a Graham Stedman goal. 12 points to six. Now, then, what about the Stones bidder man of the match out of that one, David? Well, there were difficult conditions here this afternoon. There were some commendable individual performances uh, on Featherston's side. Some say Trevor Clark, Derek Fox, but for me, the man of the match award goes to Ian Smales. He's really stood out this afternoon with a fine performance. He positioned himself well on the outside. Some good runs and good, valuable tackling all afternoon. Well, <laughs> record crowd of the season, you knew you had to win, uh, yeah, performance. We're, yeah, we've just gone out and done as best, all 15 of the lads have given 100% to base, so we've come out on top and end, so I'm glad we've done it. Well, that's five on the trot now, so hopefully it's first division only. Yes, I hope so, we still need some more wins, we've got bad for next week, so we hope to do the same again. Just go out and give us best every match now. Well, well done Ian, and best the rest of the season. Thank you. <laughs> you obviously had it on your mind to get over the line once you got that ball. <laughs> Oh, not really. I felt I was better to pass it out to the wing, but I couldn't get it out to him, so I thought I'd better go on my own. And luck <laughs> just happened to be on my side, so I crashed over for the try. Does it mean more in this dressing room when you've beaten Castleford? I, I, I must admit it does to the Featherstone lads. I mean, I mean, there's a lot of us are not to really what we call Featherstone lads, but the, the born and bred lads, they've just got that bit of feeling, and I think it's the same in the Castleford dressing room. But we've beaten a good side, make no mistake about it. We don't think that Castleford uh, are a relegation side. I think they'll get out of the relegation zone, and I hope we can stay out as well. Because in this area, Wakefield, Castleford and Featherston should all be in the first division, and uh, we get some good local derbies, and I think the rugby in this area deserves it. Is there a crisis of confidence among some of the players? I don't think there's a crisis at all, John. You know, it's, um, you know obviously the players aren't playing to their potential, and obviously there is a lack of confidence in some of the players, but uh, there's no crisis, you know, we're... You just got to just knuckle down now and um, the next couple of weeks going to be very, very vital for us. It is just down to you, isn't it? And your own performance. Well, you know, the thing is, you know, we're the only ones who can get us out. We've dug the hole there. We're the only ones who can get out the players and myself. So, um, you know, there's not looking for any scapegoats. We're just going to sit down and um, work harder and uh, obviously come up with a win. Here now the statistics. Featherston may have won the match, but Castleford's Kevin Beardmore gave Trevor Clark, who otherwise had a fine game, a real mauling in the scrums, healing 10 to 3, including two against the head. Again, it was a low penalty count, the home side conceding five, the visitors eight. Errors in play not so low, Frozen Fingers accounting for 37 drop passes, 21 of them by Castleford players. Now the results and the day's headlines. Nick. And the main story, Martin of Fire spares witnesses blushes. Rochdale held the champions to 16 all at half-time. The Fire's second half try settled it. Elsewhere, Andy Gregory and Joe Lydon turned super sub to boost Wigan after Dewsbury were only 2-0 down at half-time. Gerald Cordell, a hat-trick for Bradford in London. Andy Mason, a late try to seal Wakefield's revenge over Sheffield. 
In the championship, Rob Ackerman on his full debut is one of seven Leeds men to score two tries. In Division 2, man of the match Les Holiday gets a try and eight goals as Halifax run riot. Doncaster skipper Kevin Rain is sent off in defeat. Paul Geary runs in two tries, the eighth game in a row he scored in, and Batley still lost. The results from the Silk Cut Challenge Cup second round. Fulham 2, Bradford Northern 20. Salford 7, Oldham 18. Wakefield 27, Sheffield 12. Warrington 20, Trafford Borough 11. Whitehaven 46, Keithley 10. Witness 22, Rochdale 16. Wigan 30, Dewsbury 6. Well now the action from the all first division tie, Wakefield versus Sheffield at Bellevue. Darrell Powell was a two try man against Wakefield last week, that was in the league. Today he relived one moment in the cup, pushing aside tacklers who must dread the sight of him. And Mark Aston doesn't miss kicks as easy as that. Wakefield was stung by last week's defeat at Oakwell and came looking for revenge. Andy Kelly in a sweet move leading the raid. And then Tracy Lazenby tore onto Billy Conway's short pass and the line beckoned. Mark Conway's kick wasn't as easy as Aston's, but the result was the same. Trinity's confidence too was soaring by now, the ball fairly whizzing through the hands. And again it's Mark Conway throwing out the vital pass for Andy Wilson, believe me, to score. The crowd going potty by now, and minutes later it was Billy Conway who worked the opening, Phil Eden kicking and rushing to the best possible effect. And one Conway makes a bridge for the other to add on two more points. Wakefield's place in the last eight virtually assured in the second half when John Thompson swooped for one of his rare tries. It had been Billy Conway's pass that started it, Mark Conway's goal finished it. Sheffield rallied briefly to get over Wakefield's line again, Nickow repeating his feat from the previous week. Again, Aston obliged with a kick, but the last shout was Wakefield's, the ball squeezed out in the tackle for Andy Mason to go in at a canter. 27 points to 12, and Wakefield, along with Bradford Northern, carry Yorkshire's banner into round three. Well, from the cup to the league, two results in the Stones Bitter Championship. Featherston Rovers 12, Castleford 6, Leeds 90, Barrow 0. There's the top of the championship, no positional change. Leeds closed the gap to two points behind Wigan. And they've now played the same number of games. At the bottom, Featherston's win lifts them two places and puts Castleford into the bottom three for the first time this season. And poor Barrow, if there were a hole in the bottom of the division, they'd surely fall through it. Their points difference is now minus 650. Division 2. Batley 16, Hunslet 22, Halifax 60, Nottingham 4, Swinton 34, Doncaster 22. So Swinton have moved to within a point of Rydale York, having played the same number of games. Halifax are up one to sixth, Doncaster lose a bit of ground. Now, no doubt about the week's big story, the signing by Leeds of the Welsh and British Lions prop forward David Young. He played his first uh, test match for Wales when he was 19, played for British Lions when he was 21. He is at the present time, or he was at the present time, the pack leader, a bunning captain of Wales. So obviously he does like the responsibility of being out there and organising things. Well, Young wasn't the only newcomer today. Another ex-Welsh rugby union star, Rob Ackerman, also made his debut in the Leeds jersey. And he was soon joining in the fun. An early fun it was too, Mike Kuiti and Colin Maskell starting things off. Then a good strong burst from Paul Dixon and Cavill Hugh really enjoying scoring against the club he was playing for earlier in the season. The relative positions of the two sides told us that Leeds really should win the two points easily. And that was the way it was soon turning out. Devortis passed to Kuwiti and Ackerman is soon on the score sheet for the first time for Leeds. Great moment for him. And we're still inside the first ten minutes when, believe it or not, Leeds make another break. Crookshank and Kuwiti goes all the way himself this time. No doubt David Young, after just one A-team outing on Friday, itching to join the party. But Gary Schofield wasn't to be upstaged by anyone. Now how's this for a Schofield special? Nobody goes quite like he does. An 80-yarder, and the Leeds fans really roaring and anticipating a huge score.
The anticipation increased when Schofield again miraculously squeezed out the pass but John Bentley really shouldn't have been allowed to score. This is the reason why Barrow have a points deficit of over 600 already this season. Straight from the kickoff, would you believe it? Yes. The ball into Kuiti's hands. Watch Carl Gibson coming up now on the left touchline. Away he goes. Just one man to beat, and he streaks on the outside. And Carl Gibson, a really spectacular try. Well, the fans having a feast today. David Young still can't get in amongst it all. And we're still in the first half as Maskell and Cruikshank in at the heart of the move. Leeds keep the ball alive with Gary Devorty. Ackerman involved once more and watch for his pass now and it's Cruikshank who started it who also finished it. All this in the first 40 minutes and Leeds already past the 40 point mark. Into the second half now, and the big moment arrives. David Young to make his debut. Paul Dixon not too happy perhaps to be taken off at a stage like this, but Young certainly happy to get on. The fans pleased to see him, and he was soon to make an impact. Young right into the thick of things. And welcome to Rugby League. Storming run though, he's got quite a handoff as the chap too. And a ticking off for prop forward Mossop. And now an even better moment for the Welshman. This is the reason that Leeds have paid out their money. And the crowd quickly warming to Young. In the end he was part of a 90-point mauling, 12 points short of the club record against Coventry back in 1913. Not a bad way to start though for the new man. Obviously, you know, the, the two games that I've played have been very enjoyable. Um, it's all a learning phase for me over the next couple of months and um, I'm quite lucky as I said to come into a good side so the boys and the coaches help me through it and I'm um, enjoying every minute of it. Well next week we're at Norton Park to see if Hull can do to witness what they did to Wigan but now from Post Office Road where a Western Samoan and a New Zealander took Featherston out of the relegation zone for the first time this season. A very good night to you.